morning, Mrs. Avea. Um, I wanted to record a quick video because uh, I got to get my work day started, but I really wanted to give you a response to your comments, um, and I wanted to make sure they were clear and understood, uh, so I wouldn't have enough time to proofread the lengthy thing I started typing. Um, I just want to break this down into two parts. Uh, the first part is the most important part I think that people need to understand, um, is that there's a distinct difference between uh, religious, ri religious rights of marriage and civil contracts of marriage. And in this country, marriage, as far as the government concerned, is not a religious institution. You can choose to go to your church or your place of worship um, and have them execute the final signature on your license, but that license is still issued by the United States government, particularly by your state. And in that regard, an individual's religious beliefs or their religious definition of marriage, um, or as you put it, the word of God's definition, and again, your word of God, which is different than a Muslim's word of God, which is different than a Jew's word of God, which is different than a Hindu's word of God, which is different than my word of God. Um, those definitions are yours to hold and to cherish and to practice within your family and for yourselves. And so I would say to those people who are concerned with that, if you have moral misgivings about homosexuals, then don't marry one. Um, and don't, don't let one be married in your church. Um, and that is your right to do and that is protected. Uh, however, the government has no business discriminating off of one religion's definition of marriage, um, especially when it directly stomps on my ability to practice my faith and my belief where it is not wrong, where it is not immoral, and where it is a true and loving and wonderful thing. Um, to address your second part, uh, to kind of get into the theology of it, uh, Paul and I have had several discussions about this, and I'm sure if you look back on his Facebook page, you can find some of those. Uh, you, you mentioned off of the bat Leviticus, I believe, in justification of what uh, Christopher Saylor said earlier. Um, however, Leviticus is a horrible example to use. Uh, Leviticus and the laws in Leviticus are not followed. Uh, if you are following them, then uh, you're more closely aligned with Orthodox Jews than with Christianity. Uh, for instance, you can't wear mixed, uh, mixed blend fiber clothing. Um, you, the, the old, you can't eat shellfish. Um, women on menstrual cycles have to do various things of burning sheets. If their men lay with them, it is a sin. Um, in terms of marriage in the Old Testament, uh, I mean, you, polygamy was mentioned. Polygamy is all throughout the Old Testament, uh, not to mention rampant uh, prostitution um, and uh, the fact that women are quite literally property. Um, and additionally, uh, in the Old Law, uh, if a woman is raped, then the man is required to marry the woman, and the woman has no say in the matter. Uh, that there is a lot in the old law that is not followed, and it is my understanding, and I was brought to believe that Jesus was the fulfillment of the old law, and that you were not to follow that. So in that regard, the relation of uh, homosexuality as an abomination and comparing it to bestiality and, and the sacrifice of children um, is old law, which is no longer relevant. Uh, so that's my first aspect of, your, of my theological response. And secondly, uh, the place where there may be misgivings, and I can understand uh, I come from a very, you know, I believe you know my history, I, I come from a very traditional background in, in regards to being brought up on the Bible, and uh, the New Testament only addresses this in Romans. Um, and in Romans, uh, it is hotly contested right now amongst, and not just right now, for decades actually, uh, amongst theologians uh, in both the Catholic Church and the Protestant uh, denominations as to what Paul is saying, not just in that particular uh, chapter, in chapter 1, verses I think it's 23 through 28, um, but throughout all of Romans, um, there is a great deal of controversy within the church over Paul's teachings in Romans, and indeed the definition of homosexual in that passage was not defined until the 40s. Um, before that, it could be anything from pedophilia to other sexual acts, and then the church decided that that was going to be the interpretation they used. So again, we're dealing with man interpreting man's words that are their attempt to write down God's words. Um, as we know, the only words that God himself directly transcribed upon this earth, according to the Christian uh, uh, theology, um, is the Ten Commandments. Everything else is man writing and trying to understand the mind and the words of God. Um, and throughout time we have reinterpreted that. I mean, you can go to heaven and earth right now and pick up six different Bibles of six different editions and every verse will read completely differently. Um, not that their essence might not be the same, but the actual literal interpretation of the words. And since this all comes down to the interpretation of a literal word, marriage, I think that it is unfair to try to foist uh, that definition, which is already so fluid and liquid within uh, Christianity itself, upon those who don't practice Christianity. Um, it's in direct violation of our Constitution uh, and my constitutional rights to my beliefs and my religions, um, and on top of that, my constitutional protector right to marriage. 
Um, so what I'm trying to say is marriage is an institution uh, in this country brings two people together is how the government can recognize a unit that is going to make a family and they can make sure that family is protected and provided for and that is all that we're asking And in terms of an, a, you mentioned an attack or to protect your marriage um, protect insinuates an attack and uh, there is no attack on your marriage if anyone is being attacked it is myself and my fiance we are being legitimately directly and really affected by these amendments throughout the country and by people trying to restrict our rights um, whereas our ability to marriage changes in no substantial direct or relevant or tangible way uh, your marriage to your husband or Paul's marriage to his wife or any other person's marriage to their spouse um, and that's not a guess or a or a, uh, a w my prediction that's accurate Massachusetts has had marriage for years now marriage equality and interesting fact Massachusetts was extended equality before everyone else um, they actually have a lower divorce rate than anyone in the country because they're focused on families and preserving families and letting families practice the religions that they choose and letting families worship in the way that they choose and not trying to institute one particular belief system upon others and that's what makes our country great so um, while I respect your, uh, your your right to to believe what you believe and I would defend it to the death I do not respect uh, anyone taking their belief and pushing that onto me. Um, and actually, I don't think Christ would either. Uh, give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God's. And all throughout the New Testament, there are multiple passages saying that the government should be left to their devices and follow the government, but also follow God separately. They are two distinct and separate things. And uh, even when Simon the Zealots was trying to, uh, uh, it might not have been Simon, I, I don't have my Bible in front of me right now, so I could be mis uh, misremembering uh, the person try to get Christ to, 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 ra to ra uh, rabble up and ra rise the rabble uh, in Jerusalem and, and rise up against the Romans, uh, he, he declined. Um, he was concerned with his followers and with their souls and not with the government and not with forcing what he had to teach upon other people. Um, you come unto the, unto the Father through him. You are not forced into the Father through him. You have to come of your own volition. Um, and so it is in that spirit that I think it's important for people of all walks of life and all faiths to not impose their beliefs on others um, because that isn't true faith that will create uh, bondage and slavery um, and that is not how one finds God anyway uh, love for my family to yours uh, I look forward to the fact that in several more years this won't be an issue at all anymore um, you'll be able to have your beliefs um, and be able to live by them um, and I'll be able to have my beliefs and I'll be able to live by mine so lots of love <laughs>